Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waharuka Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Most High God. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, a Redeemer and Savior, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Yeshua, Jehovah, etc. The Rukah Kodash is the Holy Spirit that gives us the understanding of this truth. My double honors to the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone, GMS, who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth, pushing this gospel in all sincerity. Shalom also to the few Aquads who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the brother Yaraya Yashar Allah from the GMS Italy camp. And I just wanted to do this quick lesson. Hopefully, it's going to be edifying. So, the reason why I'm doing this lesson is, you know, I was watching the lesson put together by the elder Apostle Taha, you know, which is entitled Isaiah chapter 19. And this is, um, this is his channel, you know, subscribe and, you know, be sure to be edified, you know. So, this lesson is really beautiful, powerful. And, you know, it got to this point. That's the book of Isaiah chapter 19 verse 18. It said, In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan, okay, and swear to the Lord Yehovah Shemiel Shai of Ost. One shall be called the city of destruction. So what it did was it was trying to prove the point that the language of Canaan is the Lashwan Kadash, you know, it's the ancient Hebrew. So it was trying to go to Chicago, let me play. Uh, Texas. Cali, you got the very, and then you got the other camps or companies of the Israelite, uh, Israelites out there teaching. It says in that 18 verse, in that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt, we know Egypt is speak the language of Canaan. What's the language of Canaan? The language of Cain. Could go with that. Uh, let me try. Canaanite language. Bib. Try it this way. Then where the hell is it? So anyway, just go watch the video, and you know you understand what what was going on. He was trying to search for this, for this thing on Wikipedia. He got to Wikipedia, and you know Wikipedia has changed a lot of things. You know, and ever since this truth came out, you know they've been doing a lot of good jobs. You know, in changing the truth, changing things. And what they do is they write a bunch of stuffs to get you confused, you know. So I want to show you a way, a trick, a kind of trick, but a way, you know, many people already know this, you know. This is for those who don't really know. There is a website in which, you know, you can rewind any website back in time. For example, now this language of Canaan was inserted on the, in the, on the internet in 2004, which I'll show you how. So each time they go and they edit, you know, they put something new, they twist it up, they add something new, you know. So you can always go back to the to the origin. This is speaking of any website. So this is the website. It's called, you know, Wayback Machine. You call, you can type webarchive.org. Let me close this. This is the own... This is the home page. So you can pick any URL, any website you like. You know, you copy the URL and paste it here. So what we do is, you know, this is the, this is Wikipedia, Canaanite languages. This was where the elder apostle Taha went, you know, and he got actually confused because, you know, at, at one time, there were only a few things and it was straight to the point. So what Esau does is he adds a lot of things, you know, to just dribble you all around. So you don't, you don't end up finding what you're looking for. Now I'm going to copy this link. 
need to copy this link and I'll bring it back to the Wayback Machine and I'll put it right here. And this this is this is um this is useful for any website, you know. So this is like a timeline that you have over there. This is the time it was inserted first in in um let's see, this is the time it was inserted first. So you can see this black dots. Each black dot represents each time that the the article was edited or the website was edited. So what happens is you see in 2004 you have two times it was edited so i'm going to go select the very first time it was added so you come down you see there are two times in that heat in that year that it was touched the first time it was added in september the 8th 2004 then november 28th was edited but i want to come here first because anything that is added to the web cannot be cannot be um, deleted. Any website that is added to the web cannot be deleted. It's stored in a, in an archive, you know. So if you know how to use this website, you can always go back to search things up. Now let's make a confrontation between the two the two stuffs, you know, Canaanite language. That's today. It says Canaanite language or Canaanite dialect. Are one of the three subgroups of the northwest semitic languages and the other being aramaic the ugaritic you know what they're trying to do right here is to just dribble you all around so you don't get the point of what you're looking for you know so now this was when it was added in 2004 it was short clean and straight to the point it says the canaanite language are a subfamily of the semitic languages which you know semitic languages um when you hear the word semitic it comes from the son of noah whose name is sham you know it says the canaanite language as sub a subfamily of the semitic languages spoken by the ancient canaanite people canaanite languages are also spoken in ancient times by the self-identified hebrews who are believed to have migrated to the canaan region from the chaldees Okay, that's speaking of um, Abraham. It says, of this, the most well-preserved is the biblical Hebrew. And the only Canaanite language spoken as a vernacular in modern time is Israeli Hebrew. So you can see it's straight to the point. You know, it lets you know that the, the, the Canaanite language that, you know, the elder apostle was bringing out in chapter 19, verse, I believe, verse 18. Let's see. Yes, verse 18, you know, that's what it is, you know, it's the ancient Hebrew language, you know, because now you have a modern Hebrew, you know, which is a, a, a mixture of um, Slavonic, Yiddish, and the ancient Babylonian language, you know, it's all mixed up, it's not the original Hebrew, that's why it's called modern Hebrew, okay, it's not the original, but the original Hebrew is the Lashwan Kadash, that's the language that was spoken and the land of Canaan okay now that's how this um this website works you know you can just pick up any website and you know you put you put in the you put in the the URL and you see so now you see now going this is the timeline you have it right there so you see the red one represents where we actually that's the first time it was edited you can go forward and you see as time goes on Esau tries to change the information you know that's you can touch anyone and it takes you directly to that time you see you see now they've added a little more to read you know added a little more to read you know and can it shows you a lot you know it, brings out this chart but today this chart I, I doubt if you have it you know it's been taken away as you can see they've added all lots of other mumbo jumbos you know to get you confused that's what Esau does now let's take an, another try in which I was already planning to do a lesson you know on let's say Edom Let's see, Edom. It 
showing me everything in Italian. I need to get in the English. I do me. Oh, can that's right there in English. So you see, this is Edom, you know. So this is what's written now. And if you go down, you know, takes it tells you a lot of things, you know. Then at the end of the day. It shows you that religion, which is <laughs> the deity that the elder apostle Taha always says looks like um, Barry Manolo, I believe. And that's that's the face right there. You know, but it doesn't show you anything regarding Edom, you know, to modern history, you know. It kind of like tells you that East, East, East Edom is uh, extinct or so. Now, if you take this link... And you take it back to the time machine. I'm going to paste it right there. Can. So it's showing you, you know, this is today. But I want to go back to the first time it was it was added. No. So he says, Edom sounds like the Hebrew word for red. <laughs> Can you see it? It is an alternative name for Esau. How he gained his name is explained in the book of Genesis 25, 29 to 34, where Esau trades his birthright to his younger twin brother Jacob in exchange for a meal of red stew. Thus, the land of Edom is the land of Seir, in which the descendants of Esau settled, displacing the Horites and the Edomites are the people of the nation they formed there. And it says the land of Edom is generally believed to be the hill country immediately to the east of Wadi Araba, which is um, today part of the kingdom of Jordan. So you see it's short, but... It tells you red and everything you see, but now if you go to the to today, you know, it wouldn't tell you anything like that. You know, it tries to dribble you all around. You know, giving you the Akkadian. You know, it tells you anyway that it's um, literally red. You know, it says Edom was an ancient kingdom kingdom in Transjordan. Located between Moab to the northwest, northeast of the Araba, you know, it adds all these words to get you confused. Now, let's go back to Time Machine and see when they started adding some more stuffs. So, here you now they kind of like added a little bit more. Let's go for that more. So you see here it tells you December the 2nd, 2005. So it says, it says the same thing, you know. Then, you know, it adds a little more economy, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it speaks of post-biblical times. Now check this out. It says identification with Rome. He says later in Jewish history, it was the Roman Empire that came to be identified with Esau and Edom because of their frequent use of the color red in their banners and standard, and also due to their ruthless and often bloody reign in Judea. In medieval rabbinic writing, Edom is used to refer to the Byzantine Empire and Christendom in general. You see, so. They give you a lot more. Let's see if they're going to, when they start taking all this out. This is identification with Rome. But if you go to today, you know, that's been taken out. Religion, economy. You see, they're taking that away. It's no longer identified with Rome, you know. If taking all that away because you know the Hebrew Israelites style, you know, coming out with you know with eye opening stuffs about the Bible. 
you see you have it right there let's see when they made this huge change oh so you see it they already took it out from here <laughs> in 2012 they took it out you see so you don't have that identification with Rome anymore so hey you know this is something this is a tool for the brothers you know if there is a website that you once saw something and they've changed it you know you can bring it here and the way back machine is going to <laughs> expose these devils so hopefully this lesson was edifying. I would like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waharukah Kodash, Shalom.